Welcome to part five. Let's finish the modeling, shall we? Let's crack on. Okay, let's start by making the decorative badge on the flip side to the meter. Hope you guys are enjoying this uh, tutorial series. Let's duplicate the main body and rename it. And reduce the subdiv viewport levels to two and apply the modifier. We did this in the previous part when we made the, uh, the decorative metallic chrome parts. So you'd be familiar with the process. Now we don't need a lot of geometry at least all of this anyway. So let's delete most of it and just keep the area where the badge will be. So I'll just fast forward through this and also delete half of it as well. We don't need that. And now we can trim it down even further by deleting some of the faces that we don't need above and below the badge area. So the next step is to place the 3D cursor somewhere in the middle there. So Shift S, cursor to select it, and then add a cylinder. I went with 32 sides. So if you want a side view, you just want it to fit snugly inside the badge area, something like that. And we're going to use the ball tool add-on. So select both objects and press Control, Numpad, Minus. Now, depending on which order you selected the objects, uh, you, that may vary the result. So undo that and try the other way. If you don't get the result you want and you get something like this, as I did, then not to worry, just go head over and change to the intersect type in the modifier and then apply that. And now we can delete those faces that we don't need and we're left with the badge shape. Now, of course, that Boolean has resulted in some erroneous vertices and many n-gons. So focus on one half of the uh, the badge and just merge those together. Delete one half and then we can use a mirror modifier later on. Save some work. And when you're snapping these, snap to the lines that were already there because uh, that will keep the consistency. Right, with that done, let's select all of the vertices, right click and merge by distance. That actually removed three more vertices, which is good. Okay, let's make that uh, thick now, so we can add a solidify modifier. Changing the offset to one, even thickness, normals, high quality. And now you can just adjust the, the thickness. I think I went with 0 0.02 in the end. There we go. Okay, so I'm happy with that. Let's apply the Solidify modifier. Okay. Now we don't need these faces here, so you can select those and just delete those. Right, so now just work your way around and select all the outer edges and increase the mean bevel weight to one. And of course, with that, we can add a bevel modifier. Use the limit method to weight Profile set to one, segment two. And now we can just adjust the the width, the amount of the bevel that we want. So it helps to turn the wireframe on so you can see exactly what's happening there. Now let's add a subdivision modifier and increase the viewport levels to two as well. Let's turn off the wireframe. That's okay, but you can see we've got a slight jaggedy Bit just here at the top and the bottom where these vertices are really close together so we need to just merge a few more there so as before merge to the target one the second one you select and just like that and then do the same on the lower edge area as well cool let's add a mirror modifier bring that above everything else in the stack and switch that to the y-axis of course and that's looking cool something like that looks really nice <laughs> there's the duffy duck let's apply the mirror modifier let's turn off the other ones as well so we can see what we're doing let's actually turn these back on again 
Uh, okay, let's increase the viewport and the render levels to three on the subdiv as well. Okay, so let's tap into edit mode and select all of the faces at the front. So I'm going to select the few in the middle and then control plus to increase the selection. Shortcut there. Right. Make a backup before you do that, actually. And then do that again. Have the selection. And press I to inset. And we have a disaster. Yeah. Couldn't agree more, Tom. Or is it Jerry? Yes, we can fix it. So let's do that. But it is slightly tedious, but not a lot of work. Just need to select vertices and use the power of edge and vertex sliding. And to do that, select a vertex or an edge and tap G key twice. So GG and slide along edges. Again, I'll fast forward through that because it's a little bit tedious to watch. Again, focus on the one half because we can just delete the other half now actually and use the mirror modifier again. Almost there. Might as well do this edge just like that. Remember to press GG to keep it all nicely uniformed. And then select one half and delete it. Now we can add the mirror modifier again. Probably should have kept the other one, but never mind. Move it to the top of the stack. Switch it to Y. And don't forget to turn clipping on as well. Okay. Let's apply the mirror modifier once more. Now we're going to select this uh, inner edge loop just there and bevel it with control B. And of course we've got the some inherited mean bevel weights there, which are not one. I don't remember if I don't think I actually changed it back to one later. Um, so if I didn't do that, make sure that you do that. That'll give you a cleaner bevel. Let's inset those faces that we've just created with the bevel. And then with that, we're going to select the inner edge loops with control click and shift alt click. Sorry, alt click, not, not control. And increase the mean bevel weight. Sorry, the mean increase to one on those to make them sharp. And that's looking really cool. Nice and clean. Exactly what happens now. Unfortunately, a bit more tidying up. So I'm just going to redistribute some of these edges and vertices. And that helps with shading and more of a consistent shape across the, uh, the whole object, really. Good practice to do that. So it doesn't take long, just a few seconds. Don't worry about the odd end gone here and there. That would be smoothed out by the subdivision modifier. Once more, a backup, it's always a good idea. Okay, let's get to another part now. Let's make the screw head. So I'm going to use a cylinder for that using 16 sides. And let's position it roughly in this point here. Let's give that a quick rename. So tap into edit mode, select the top face and just bring it down and then press E to extrude and pull it up. Doesn't need much, just a little bit. And then with that done, actually before we do that, let's just select the bottom face and press I to inset it, then delete that face. Although you don't have to delete it, in hindsight it may not have been the best idea. But anyway, getting back on track, select the top face, inset it with I, and then bring that up just a little bit. And that will create the profile of our screw head. Very basic, of course, much easier to work with. Right, let's select these uh, vertices here and press J to join them. That, that will create an edge between them. And select that edge loop now that we've just connected. Uh, control B to bevel it. And give it a nice width like that. And that's going to be the, the part where the screwdriver would go into. And once you've done that, select these faces. And delete those. Now we just need to fill in the holes left behind. 
Sorry if I heard my phone in the background there. I forgot to put it on silent. Okay, as I say, just uh, continue going around and filling these holes. Uh, make sure you create one face at a time. We don't want end gons at this point. Something like that is, is good. Right, now select all of these edges and edge loops and the inner ones as well and increase the mean bevel weight to one and we can do the same for the lower one as well so now you have these selected and uh, applied let's add a subdivision modifier and a bevel modifier like before we're just going to add these modifiers to add a bit more detail to this part and there you go right click to uh, set the origin to geometry we're pretty much done now so if, if the screw head is too large tab into edit mode select all and press s for scale i decided to actually make the uh, bevel a little bit tighter up to you of course so with that done we're ready to place this and duplicate it and put it wherever we need it so let's put it over here first i think sometimes it turns uh, helps to turn the shadow on in the overlays just so we can see how much contact we're actually getting and there you can see we have the hole that we made earlier as i said then you don't have to delete that face that we created uh, deleted earlier in fact, I could have just filled that and just be done with it, but I don't know why I just didn't do that. But never mind, you live and learn. So um, I'm going to leave it for now. It doesn't make a huge difference. And once you've done that, we're going to do this really cool trick. Think of it as a macro. Firstly, put the 3D cursor in the center of that object. Then select the screw head. And we should change the transformation from global to 3D cursor. If you don't, this happens. It just rotates around the origin of that object, which is what we don't want. We want it to rotate around the 3D cursor. So, and in fact, the 3D cursor is there, right at the top of that list. I just didn't see it. So I did. I pressed Control Z to undo that. Select that again, and then change this to, oops, not global, uh, the transformation point to 3D cursor. So you want Alt D. R, 45, and then Shift R to repeat it. So that's Shift, uh, Alt D to create a duplicate. R, Y axis, 45, and then Shift R to repeat that. And all I'm doing now is going to local view and just giving, some, giving all of these screw heads a random rotation. Right, let's change that back to global again at the top there. Because now we're going to duplicate this one again. Again, using Alt D, so the linked duplicates, and using a bit of snapping as well, face snapping. I'm going to place these roughly where we want them. A little bit tedious, this part. I just want to look at it from different views and give it minor rotations and place it approximately on the surface. Doesn't have to be perfect. Yeah, the, a shortcut there is a shift right click and that will target the 3D cursor onto the projected surface that you've clicked on. And then you can do shift S selected to cursor, uh, selection to cursor, I should say. And that gives you a quick uh, teleportation of your object to that location. So we're just adding the screw heads to the back of the grip then the front as well as well as the meter element of course and with that done i think that's pretty much it for the screw heads of course you feel free to put them in more places if you want to let's quickly make this glass um, object that's going to sit in front of the obviously on the face of the meter so a little bit fiddly this one because you've got the back plate where we're going to ultimately add a texture map of whatever you want really um, now in edit mode, you could have just simply added a cylinder. I should have done that. I chose to duplicate an edge loop, trying to be clever, and then extruding that and giving it some thickness and all sorts. As I said, feel free to just add a cylinder. It's exactly the same thing. And a quick fix here. I noticed this one was facing the wrong way. So 
I'll just quickly fix the face normals on that object. Right, back to this pesky glass, which I way overcomplicated. So, sorry about that. Uh, make space for the glass, because it will have some thickness. And of course, that needs to be in front of the needle. So do what you need to do. Very simple. Let's position that in the right place. And origin to center, of course. Like I said, probably easier just to create a cylinder. Okay, we're almost there. I was trying to get the alpha transparency to work in the viewport for some reason it wasn't working. I did something wrong somewhere, but anyway. I want to check that it all looked good. So there, you can see that everything looks fine just behind there. Okay, now I'm skipping ahead a little bit here. So I want a really clean look to this ray gun. And it's based, of course, on a retro uh, style and theme. So I did some Google searches, found some inspiration. And the image I showed you there, I'm going to load into Blender and sample those colors, which are apparently pop were popular colors back in the 50s. And they're really nice. So I'm just going to sample each of those for various parts of the, of the ray gun. Feel free to make your own colors, of course. So I will be making other materials, of course. And again, you can just feel free to do what you like with those. And that will include things like the gaskets, the rubber, the glass, uh, the cloth material, which is very basic in itself, um, the ceramic part with those three ribbed things, a ceramic pylon thing. Um, so yeah, very simple materials at this point, mainly using metallic, set to one of course, and roughness of 0.25, pretty much for all of it. But I'll just play this out. That dial's looking pretty good. So we'll make sure we make a selection here. Add additional material slots, of course, as you need them, and assign those other materials to the selected faces. So this one I'm going to make uh, like a the mint green. So I'm going to add a slot. In fact, just change the button there. You can see the color and the gasket and the glass. So all I'm doing here is selecting existing objects and using materials I've already created and just selecting them from the drop down list. You don't have to make five different metallic materials for the same thing. So trying to think about the combination of colors as you're doing this and look for things like contrast. It's always a good uh, philosophy when designing something like this. So you have contrasting colors next to each other. So I'm going to make this part actually orange. I did try various color combinations here, but I found this one was what I liked, thought worked really well. In fact, we're going to come back to the grip later on and tidy that up just a little bit more, get a bit more visual interest because it looks a little bit bland right now. Um, a bit soft around those ridges. Not this part, but the, the lower part. What I'm doing here is making selections and applying different material slots to those faces that I've selected. Very important, don't forget to click the assign button. Okay, so far so good. Let's finish off applying some more materials to the other parts that are still white. Let's make that dark so we've got nice contrast and the gasket. Quite a high level of roughness there. I went with 0.65 for now, but we'll change the materials later in the final video or the material video anyway. It's also going to be, I'll also be covering the animation as well. 
So I'm just refining some of the selections here and adding the, 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 the gasket or rubber material. Let's create a new one here for the ceramic part. Quite a low roughness, it's 0.15 this time. Sampled the yellow and just turned the saturation down there. Yes, in this instance here, I had to move the glass out of the way. So I copied its location value from the side menu and paste it back in again afterwards. So it goes back exactly where it should go. As you can see, when you model something like this, the, the, uh, the objects add up and it, you know, it could take you know, five, 10 minutes to actually do this part, just going through and selecting faces and objects and applying materials. Once you've done it once, that's all you need to do. You don't do it again. So let's create a new one here for the badge decal. That'll, and I will uh, UV unwrap that in the next video. Okay, so as I mentioned earlier, I'm going to revisit the grip. So I wasn't happy with how the soft light looks. So I'm going to really tighten up these um, bevels. Yeah, it does look bad. So I'm going to tighten up these gaps here and bring them closer together. So literally pinch these together like that. You can see it's slightly off, but you can't really tell. And of course we need to bevel these edges as well. So at the moment they're being subdivided. So I'm adding a manual bevel with control B. Now I'll create an inset here as well. So Alt E, extrude faces along normals. Then it's a case of selecting inner curves, edge loops, I should say, and adding a mean crease of one. That's a mean crease of one to make those edges sharp. That's looking a lot nicer now. And uh, finally, redistribute some of these back facing or on the back of the grip these edge loops because they're they're quite clumped up together there that's going to end up in a harder shape so just rounding that off like that got some more beveling to do here there we go and finally we can add the the the, uh, the dark material inside those parts there as well make that part silver actually maybe there we go, make that dark as well. And do the same for these parts here. That's better. Right, that concludes part five. Join me in the next one. See you then. Bye for now.